Welcome to Binghamton University's returning student housing process, selecting a room. The process begins on the Residential Life homepage, reslife.binghamton.edu, where you'll find a link on the right-hand side to our returning student housing process. When you're ready, click to log into the housing portal. Here in the housing portal, we'll click on the term selector for our returning student housing process. And typically, we're going to find ourselves in the application status page. This tells me that I actually have a time slot in progress. Yours may indicate that you uh, do not currently have a time slot. It'll tell you when housing begins. We will not be sending you an email with your time slot as we may have done when you were first coming to Binghamton because you may be qualified for several different priorities. We don't know what you want to do as a returning student. So it's up to you to make sure you familiarize yourself with the instructions and then sign up during the appropriate time. Before we do that, let's go back and have a look at our group. I'm going to click on group formation and I've got a four person group here. And there's a few things I want to point out. If you're signing up during a priority where credit hour blocks are in place, in other words, you're going to sign up at a particular time depending on your group's average credit hours, you'll need to make sure that you add up all of your group's credits and any extra points you may have earned during the process. And then develop a group average by dividing your total number of credits and priority points by the total number of people in your group. The other thing to point out here is our living option agreement signed. These are things like break housing, chem-free, quiet floors. Now, it's important to understand that you have to make sure that your group entirely matches on living option agreements if you want to live in specialty housing like break housing, chem-free housing, or quiet living. If I look at my group here, I see that Dean Thomas has break housing, Seamus Finnegan has chem-free, Oliver Wood has chem-free, and Lee Jordan has chem-free. If I want to live in chem-free housing, Currently, if I go into housing selection, I'm not going to see any because Dean Thomas is missing the chem-free agreement. In order to see chem-free housing, I would have to go back to the living options screen, add the chem-free agreement to my housing choices, and make sure that I agree to the chem-free agreement. When I come back to the group formation page, I can then see that I have chem-free, Seamus, Oliver, and Lee all do as well. And we'll now see chem-free housing if we go into a building that has it. So again, make sure that you calculate your average credits among all of your group members and make sure that everybody has matching living option agreements if you're going to live in specialty housing. The other thing to consider is who the group leader should be. If you're all from the same area, it doesn't really matter unless you're planning on renewing a particular room that you currently live in, in which case you want to make sure the person who currently occupies that space is the group leader. Remember that where the members of your group currently live is important to the process, depending on which priority you're signing up in. There are some priorities where everyone in the group must live in the same area, and then there are other priorities where you can pull people in from other areas, but the group leader has to currently live in the area that they want to live in. You can also change the leader very easily by clicking the Make Leader button on the right-hand side of the screen. It's important that you don't change the leader after midnight the day before the priority begins. This is because we'll only be giving the group leader the time slot to sign up the group. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm just going to go ahead to application status so we can start off just as we normally would. My time slot is in progress. I'll click save and continue. And I'm going to be going to priority eight, which is our fill anywhere on campus. So I have to find a room or suite or flat or apartment and fill it completely. I'm going to choose CIW because it offers us a choice of quarter style rooms and suite style rooms. On the left hand side of the screen, you can see I've got areas to choose from. And because I'm looking at College in the Woods right now, I've got the College in the Woods buildings. I'm going to filter to just look at Oneida. So I see all of Oneida here, all the rooms that I'm eligible for. And it's important to consider that I'll be able to see chem-free rooms if they exist in Oneida. And all the rooms will match our group gender. The very first thing I see on the screen is Oneida 2J. I can see that this is a suite. And we can see the difference between suites and regular double rooms. Because remember, in College in the Woods, you'll find regular quarter-style doubles alongside suite-type housing. Now, if I want to live in 2J, I can click on Select, and I'm going to receive an error. Notice how the error brings me right up to the top of the screen. And it's telling me that my group is too small to fill all six available spaces. As it happens, just down the page here, I can see Oneida 3C. Oneida 3C is a, is a four-person, two-bedroom suite. When I click on any bedroom in the suite, it's going to select the entire suite. Whoever clicks on these buttons first will win the entire suite for five minutes. And you'll notice up in the top right-hand corner of the screen, there's a running clock. 
So I have five minutes now to go ahead and assign the beds to this room. And I do that very easily. I decide who should live with who. So I'm going to put uh, myself here into bedroom 3C1. I'm going to have as a roommate, Lee Jordan. For the second room in the suite, I'm going to put Oliver Wood and Seamus together. And I'm going to go ahead and assign the beds. This is a fill priority. I would receive an error message if I didn't completely fill that room. This is my last chance to confirm what I've selected. I want to make sure that I'm in the correct building, in the correct rooms. So if I like where I'm at, I'm going to click on Confirm. If you don't click the Confirm button, or you won't get the assignment. Once you've done that, you're going to come back here to Application Status. You'll see your application is now complete. You can see a summary of all of your bookings. All four people are now assigned in the rooms, and again, you can see that they're in 3C1 and 3C2 of Oneida. And once we've seen that, you'll notice that we've all of our options we used to have up here have now disappeared, and that's all there is to it. All we do now is click Log Out, and we're done. And that's it for signing up for Returning Student Housing.